Hello, this is Joseph, and today I wanted to talk about how to supercharge your Laravel blade template process. This is really just going to dive into browser sync, but I want to give as, not, as much premise to this as I can, much information as I can, to keep you guys well informed on what I'm actually talking about. Um, so browser sync is a way to be able to synchronize not only your browser with the code, meaning that when you do a piece of code change, Browser Sync would do its best not have to reload the entire page and lose state. It'll reload only the chunk of the HTML that you've updated or the JavaScript or the CSS. Um, but it does that across devices and you can do things like you can synchronize the scroll across browsers and cell phones and, and tablets. So if you're scrolling on, uh, if you go to your phone, you start scrolling, you can have that, that scroll mimic that where you tapping the buttons mimic on the next device or on the other device or on the other browser that you have is an incredibly powerful tool for testing and visualizing what's happening on other browsers. So if you have like multiple, if you need to test on Safari and Chrome and, and Firefox or Edge or whatever, you could do that all at once to have all those browsers open and make a change, text change, and just watch them all refresh and scroll down to the point to where you need. It sounds awesome. And with Laravel Mix, it makes it incredibly simple, but there are some requirements for that. So I'm going to go over that very quickly. The first thing you're going to need is Node.js. If you don't have that installed, just go ahead and go to nodejs.org and click on the LTS version of that. It should take you to whatever you need. It's just downloading whatever operating system I have, which is Mac. And I don't need to install it, but basically double click install, just go through the process. You don't need to really think too hard about what those options provide during the install. And if you've already had it installed, it'll actually tell you in advance. So you're not accidentally overwriting something that you're not expecting to. Okay. So with that out of the way, the next part you're going to want to do is go to your directory through a terminal. So here I have my terminal. I'm at my directory of my Laravel instance. Here you can see uh, all the files I have for what my app and I at this point I'm just going to do an npm install this is going to install all the dependencies needed for Laravel mix to run browser sync does not come with this out of the box uh, or at least installed out of the box because you're not using it which is an incredibly useful feature for Laravel mix when you're not using something you're not having to download every possible node.js library required to to use something like browser sync and it'll install it when you want to use it. So let's go ahead. And now we need to jump over to the project, go down to um, webpack.mix.json. And uh, let me go ahead and delete all of this and show you guys not too much. And so this is my simple setup here. It's not really anything wow based or anything, but you just, um, you can either do, just add a new line here and type in dot browser sync. and put in the text or you can also do it as a new line so you can do mix dot browser sync and the same parameters that i will apply will be there too so i'm going to keep it with everything else super simple um and now what you'd put in for this string would be your host and your port of the host if needed if you're using something like homestead and you have a domain set up with your host file you'd say like dev dot my app.com you don't really need to provide the host because it, it already has that by default. So whatever Laravel's homestead default port is, is what is entered here. And so if you need to change that, for example, I'm using artisan, artisan serve for my terminal. So if I go here, I'm using the artisan PHP artisan serve stuff, which is just the standard PHP built in server. It's running on port 3000 or 8,000 and it's localhost. So I'm going to do localhost. 8,000. Um, and there's different ways to break this out. This is the most simplest way you can do. Go ahead and save that. And if you are running um, this for the first time, you do npm run watch and just press enter. Now, where I'm getting this from is, is the, at least the watch command is actually in package.json. So you can go package.json and here is watch. It tells you what it's running. So that's that. It's going to try to compile the code or whatnot, and then browser sync will go ahead and set up. However, if you've, if you're running this for the first time, it'll say, uh, download in browser sync or something like that. 
and it'll tell you to rerun the same command again. So just run it a second time. And here it opened up the window, but I don't want to use Safari uh, for debugging purposes. But here's my current example here. I have like a, a add chore page with uh, some Vue.js code and it's on port 8000. This is without the thing. And it tells you some nice thing here. So if I wanted to see this on my cell phone, it gives me the my local router IP address that I have. So I found if I'm on the same Wi-Fi um, as this computer is, I can just go to this on my cell phone and have that same browser sync feature. So let's go ahead and just copy localhost um, and throw it in here and press enter. And everything should look exactly the same. The only thing you'll notice was that browser sync option. And then here is the beauty why this is so um, awesome to have. So which one is this one? This is the, okay, that's the app layout. We can just change, let's see, let's change chore to chores. Let's make this a little smaller. So it's already changed. I didn't have to save it. I guess that's something I have with PHP Storm. When I the thing loses focus, it, it changes. But either way, uh, Let's, let's add it with a space two and I hit save on, on purpose. It goes, it's already going and reloading it. And like I said, if I, if I scroll down just a little bit and I go ahead and change that again, it'll go ahead and remember my scroll position. Now there's some nuances to this. For example, I'm using Vue.js. So if I'm, I'm, I'm ticking off some stuff and I'm scrolling down that requires state to be remembered. Um, it doesn't always remember it. You may have to work with it to, to figure it out, but see here, all my stuff that I had, it's kind of gone. Let's see if I put something in here, if that's the same solution or same issue. Yeah. So it's not remembering the actual form state, unfortunately, but that's part of the Laravel thing. I don't think that actually is an issue with browser sync specifically, but it's just, you know, bottom line, super simple setup. Um, you get browser, a uh, browser feature, just amazing, uh, to have it's CSS, it's JavaScript and you can change your blade templates and it reloads. If it's CSS and JavaScript, you may most often than not, not actually need to reload the entire page. So you're not losing your state. And so I'm just going to dive into a couple of options that I, I usually do do, which is I, I don't just have this as a string. I usually have all the options that I want. So proxy is the same thing you would put if you just had the string. Um, another one I, I would recommend to do is sometimes the scroll position does not remember for whatever reason that I, I lose it. And so I'm going to show some of the browser sync options. You just go to Google search up uh, browser sync options. And the one that I usually uh, change is the scroll restore technique. And I'll just change that the cookie. So uh, let me just go ahead and copy this real quick. And then I'll have this set to cookie. And then there's one more I may do if there is performance issues that I am having a problem to where it's it's too slow to reload that I can click the reload button faster than I could uh, see the refresh happen from browser sync. And that's files. So files is a way to specify what folders to look into. So if I only care about my my blade templates and I don't need CSS reloading or JavaScript reloading, I can say like resources slash views slash asterisk. And then you can say like asterisk means these two asterisks means recursively go into it. And this other asterisk means uh, every single file. I can also specify an extension if I wanted to. So blade.php to make sure that it's all just blade files that I'm looking through. Um, now when I'm making this change, I do need to restart my process that I have here. So I'm press control C to cancel the command. If you're on windows, just press control C twice and you can press up and press enter. Uh, it'll run it all over again, do the initial build that it does do. And you should be set to go with that. Now, when I make a change, I don't think it's going to be any, any quicker here. Actually, I, I didn't even put the right folder. So if I do make a change, it's not going to technically do anything. So let's just go back. Another thing with this is that um, if you had disconnected or stopped it and you restart it again, it'll automatically reconnect. So you don't have to do anything um, like re refresh the page again. So I'm just going to I'm just going to add the S back here, and you know it's now or if it, it's not even S, but it's 
it's not refreshing and it's because I did put in the wrong folder. So I'm just going to quickly change that and um, reload that. So resources, views, npm run watch. And as soon as that reloads, and we can go back and maybe add like a little space. Let's add so we reconnects. There we go. Reconnect it. Just had a minor delay there, that was all. So chores too. And it refreshes. You notice I didn't try to refresh this to get the connection to reinitialize. It's it 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 knows that needs to refresh. And so that's browser sync. Um, there's more options there. For example, another performance tweak you could do other than specifying the specific folders is to go to and look for online. That's another option. And that reduces the kind of the startup and lookup time for proxying uh, your, your domains and stuff like that. So it's called online. You just set it to false and it should help with some of the networking issues that are usually associated with this. Now, I don't want to say that live reload X is useless or uh, the other technique is useless, but basically there are other ways to do this. If you're still having performance problems, um, there, there's still hope for you in some way. There's live reload X, which is really, really dead simple. All you do is you install uh, live reload X as NPM. So you just installed node. You should be able to run this. You may have to run this as sudo if you're on Linux or, or Mac. And then you take some HTML JavaScripty thing, you jump to over to your, your layout file, just go to the bottom or wherever you want to place it, and you place it there. Then you would just go and copy the um, this, not this example, but the library load x s, and then you'd specify the path that you want to watch. So let's go ahead and stop this for here, and let's put this in library load x. And now I'm going to say resources. And then let's say I just want to watch my views folder. So that's going to watch that. And instead of going to port 3000, I'm going back to my original port since it's not doing any proxying. And let's go add a chore. And so that's going to stay over there, do its thing. And then I can go back, make this smaller again one more time. I can go back and just change the S. And for me, it's usually quicker. Uh, and I, I have the options. Some of the things don't usually work, like the debug bars, for whatever reason, not working through the sync, which may be an option to change or something, but it's not something I've really cared about. Um, but yeah, it's it's dumber in the sense that if you like scroll down and you make a change, it's just going to toss you to the back on top. I actually remember that time. That's That's interesting. Um, but mo more times than not, I just find it, it just doesn't even work. Um, it does try to do some CSS hot swapping stuff if it can. And yeah, so that it's just, uh, you're not having to do the proxy or you're not having to go through Webpack to set it up. You can do browser sync outside of Webpack too, but it's just a nice little feature there. The other thing to the, that I wanted to show you guys was like, if you, if you wanted to use those things and you're still having performance problems, um, and you just want the CSS or the JavaScript, or you want to just make the HTMLs without the blade template stuff, you can actually right click and inspect, go to sources, right click, add folder to workspace. And at that point, it's going to act, ask you to map the folder that you want to use, uh, or at least map to. So if I had like a JavaScript folder, I can map to that. Um, and then as I'm working on this file, as I'm changing the CSS, Chrome will deal that with me. And of course, that's always going to be much more efficient than something like browser sync. But like I said, browser sync works across devices. You can mimic and emulate scrolling. So you can just test on your, your local browser and watch your other devices scroll and click around as you do too. It is an incredibly useful tool. It's worth having if you're able to run it at the speed that's necessary to make you productive. I would definitely re recommend it. And that's it. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this screencast and you learned something. If not, um, let me know and, you know, like, subscribe, click the little bell. Until next time.